Alright, so getting started with 10x Cell Ranger is pretty straightforward. Just go on over to the 10x Downloads website. You can just Google 10x Downloads. And from here, we really only need two things. We want the Cell Ranger binary. So you can just copy this text and just paste it in your terminal. And then once that's done, just grab the reference that you need. I have human data, so I want the human reference. If your data set is from mice, you would pick up the mouse reference data set. If it's some other organism, you would have to build your own custom 10x reference, which I might cover in a future video. But for now, I'm just going to copy this and paste it in the terminal. Once that's done, we need to unzip these. So just run a tar xf. And then again on the reference. And this might take a minute or two because it's a pretty big file. And then let's just free up some space. Alright, so now we have everything to actually run Cell Ranger. We have the binary, the reference, and our sample fast queues. So let me just show you what the sample fast queues should look like. The format of these fast queue file names actually makes a difference. And if they're not set up correctly, Soul Ranger will give you an error. So basically, you have your sample ID here, the sample number, and then this nomenclature. Well, this is an index file, so you don't actually need those. We want an R1 and an R2 file. This sample name here can be anything. This doesn't matter. Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember if you need this or not, but this part will matter. And most likely, the files you'll be using came from an Illumina instrument, so by default, they should look like this. But in case you downloaded them from a public repository, or the file names were changed for some reason, you'll have to change them back. And sometimes, if there's no way to know what they were originally, you'll kind of have to guess, but that's beyond the point for right now. Okay, so the good thing about the new version of Cell Ranger is that it's a binary, so you don't actually have to install anything. You can just download it anywhere and run it. And if you look inside the directory, here's the path to the actual binary. So we just have to point to this. So Cell Ranger, Cell Ranger, and then we're going to use the count function. Then we want to give the sample an ID. So we'll just call it tutorial sample. It can be anything you want it to be. And then we need to point to the transcriptum, which is the ref data directory. And then we need to point to the fast queues, which is just the directory containing the fast queues. And then we only have one sample. And then this part is important, the expect cells. So you need to know the number of cells that they aimed for when they did the wet lab experiment. Usually this is in the range of between 1,000 and 10,000. And it doesn't have to be exact. It rarely ever is exact. But you want it to be at least in the ballpark of how many cells they aimed for when they formed the single cell suspension. In this case, we aimed for 10,000. Now we can set local cores. I'm going to use 20 because my computer has over 20 CPU threads. And then local memory and gigabytes, I'm going to set it at 100. So the higher you set these, just the faster it'll take to actually run the sample. So these are the basic arguments for running Cell Ranger. The 10x website has a more detailed explanation and additional arguments, but in most cases this pretty much covers the majority of what you would need. And even with 20 threads and 100 gigabytes of RAM, it'll probably still take it at least an hour to two hours per sample. Maybe we do have to change this. Yeah, so the sample has to be the prefix of your FASTQ files. Okay, so when it finishes, you'll see something like this. What we really want to do is check the web summary HTML. We're going to open it up in Firefox, but if you ran this on a remote server, you'd want to download this with SFTP or however you get files off your server. And since we put tutorial sample as the ID, that's what the, all the output's going to go into that directory called tutorial sample.
So this looks really good. Like I said earlier, you never get your actual number of expected cells unless you get a little lucky. And you did a really good job counting. This is a good number of median genes per cell. You want above a thousand, but I've seen some samples all the way down at like 500, but usually anything above a thousand means your samples turned out all right. And if you had happened to use the wrong reference, it would give you a warning saying, you had a low number of reads mapped to the genome. So it's really good to check this. I've made mistakes in the past where I accidentally used the wrong reference. And then I noticed here, if we scroll down to reads that map to genome, we see we have a really high percent. And we see that we have 60% that mapped confidently to exonic regions, which is actually pretty high and a low percent that mapped to an antisense region, which is good. As you see here, we never specified chemistry. It auto detects what chemistry you use. And finally, I did include the analysis in the pipeline. It doesn't add much time, but we will be doing our own downstream analysis. But if you want to check as just like a QC measure, we see different clusters here. You usually don't want to do in vitro samples or single cell sequencing, but for this project in particular, we were interested in differentiating between infected and non-infected cells with Zika virus. So we would need single cell sequencing to do that. You couldn't just do bulk RNA-seq. But since it was just an in vitro culture of one cell type, you see that we really just get one big cluster. But if you had a tissue, you'd expect multiple clusters here. It looks like it turned out pretty well. Next, I'll go over in a little more detail the outputs of Cell Ranger, and eventually we'll get to some downstream analysis.